Hey guys, uh, what's up? I have another video for you guys, uh, basically continuing the Hackintosh series. Not really Hackintosh anymore because I just decided to not do that for now. Uh, because it's simply not working that well as I wanted it to. Slightly buggy, plus Mountain Lion just came out and, well not came out, the developer version was released and uh, is going to be coming out fairly soon. So I'm just holding off for uh, Mac OS X right now. I will be doing it most likely in the future. What I'm hoping on doing is getting another SSD because I'm having slight issues with partitioning it, uh, Windows and my BIOS and nothing is really coming together properly. So um, in the meantime, I decided to go fully Windows as you can see right there. Um, so this video is basically going to be about rating my computer and also rating your computer most likely uh, if you can understand what I'm doing in this video so basically this video is going to show you how to take two or more hard drives um, in this video I'm taking two hard drives uh, each one this video for me is 1.5 terabytes now some most likely uh, yours is not actually the size that they tell you it is uh, usually you lose, you lose about 10 percent of what they actually tell you so if it's 1.5 terabytes you'd have around 1.3 something around that you don't really lose a lot but you do it's never like you lose a certain amount of gigabytes it's usually you lose a percentage of the total amount they tell you and usually that percentage is around 10 or 20 percent it really varies slightly per company or what they do but that's essentially what's happening in this video now there are two types of raids um, I'm not going to be explaining that much but there is raid zero and then there's RAID 1. In this video, I'm doing RAID 1. You will also have the option to do RAID 0. Um, in this video, I don't really tell you which one to do. It's all up to you, but um, I allow you to do... I mean, it's not... I'm not asking you to do any single one. You can do whatever you want, but I'm showing you guys how to do RAID 1 for me because RAID 1 is basically allowing me to back up my content from one hard drive to the other and basically have them appear as one hard drive in Windows. You gotta do several things. You have to go into BIOS, which is really annoying if you have an MSI one like me. MSI decides to like make their BIOS really flashy. It's called Click BIOS 2. It's one of the most annoying things to go through ever for computers. Um, it's pretty annoying. A lot of stuff is hidden and stuff. Basically, what you gotta go to is go into your settings, advanced, integrated peripherals, all that kind of stuff. Go into your boot. Set everything to RAID. I'll explain it later in the video, but basically that's what you have to do. It's not the easiest thing in the world. Um, you have to remember, well, certain processes have to go in order. You can't install Windows and then go to RAID. You have to first go to RAID and go to Windows after that. So you got to follow the processes in order so that you know what you're doing and so that you don't screw up because I've done this three times. Two times I screwed up, one time I got it right. So. Uh, go figure the last time I figured out what to do. So you guys can most likely assume that it is wise to listen to what I'm saying and go in the order that I tell you guys to go in. Otherwise, just uh, watch the video. Uh, most likely pause in different spots uh, so you guys can uh, decide where to um, do certain steps. Like You can pause it right after I'm done with the steps so you can do it for your computer. It, it doesn't really matter what you do, but um, that's what I recommend. So I recommend you watch this video while your computer is right next to you about to get raided. So um, yeah, with that, go watch the video. Alright guys, so what I have going on over here is a look inside of my computer. Uh, basically what you're seeing is all of my connectors to SATA. Uh, this one right here goes to my SSD, 120GB SSD. And that SSD is actually right here. I'm not going to pull it out of this bay, but you can see it right there, very small. And above it are my two HDDs. Now over here, uh, below that uh, connector to the... SSD are two cables that go over here to my DVDs, uh, DVD drive, Blu-ray, you know, that whole thing at the front. And over here, under that, in ports 5 and 6, I have the two cables, the red ones, that are going straight from there to the HDDs. Now, the HDDs is what I'm going to be rating, and uh, you want to make sure they're all plugged in. Now, for some reason, in MSI, I'll show you guys this in a second, but uh, MSI 
for some reason, they don't recognize that I have a 7 and 8. 7 and 8 and 1 and 2 on the uh, SATA are the fastest ports. Now, I don't really need uh, 7 and 8 or 1 and 2. Uh, the only hard drive that is actually fast enough for those ports is an SSD. All the other HDDs are not fast enough and don't require those ports. Um, this is how it basically works. If you plug an SSD into a slower port, its maximum speed is the speed of that port. But if you plug an SSD into a port that has the same, if not higher speed, than the SSD itself, the SSD will run much faster and just a much more, I guess, quick experience. So when you do that, uh, you are allowing the SSD to be at maximum speed. Um, but for the HDDs, they don't really run that fast. I mean, 7200 RPM, uh, I don't really remember what the specs are, but um, of these guys, uh, they're not that fast, so you need to plug them into a port such as the 5 and 6 or two or a 3 and 4 because uh, you don't really need to take up a fast port for those. And you don't really have to do this. Uh, if you only have three hard drives, it doesn't really matter. But if you have a lot of hard drives, you want to plug in the hard drives to their corresponding uh, SATA places uh, 1 and 2, 3 and 4, 5 and 6 and 7 and 8. 1 and 2, 7 and 8 are the fastest. 3 through uh, 6 are the slowest, so that's what you want to do. But basically that's what you have to do first. Make sure everything's plugged in, and then from there, shut down the computer. Well, hopefully your computer's already shut down when you're doing this. Uh, boot back up, and uh, then go to BIOS. Now, everyone's BIOS is most likely different. I have one of the strangest BIOSes on planet Earth. I have Click BIOS 2, which is extremely hard to use, I have to say. It's not as simple as a lot of the other BIOSes now. It does look a lot cleaner. Um, it looks really high tech and stuff like that, but they just made it really fancy and a little bit slightly annoying to operate. A lot of the older uh, BIOSes on like Gigabyte models and ASUS models, the BIOSes are just way easier to navigate through and everything's there. For here, you gotta go through settings and utilities and every single different category you can imagine to uh, get through all the settings you need so that's just one thing I have to say it's probably different for everyone's BIOSes but if you can get into integrated peripherals and go into the RAID settings you should be good for that so uh, with that guys go to your BIOS and I'll see you there alright guys so we're now in click BIOS 2 for me you may be in a different BIOS you're most likely in a different BIOS MSI has done their own thing uh, but most likely you'll have a different BIOS so what you want to do for me if you have settings on the MSI uh, click BIOS 2, you want to go into your settings, go into advanced, and then go into integrated peripherals. Now, in the SATA mode configuration, which I'll zoom you guys in right here, SATA configuration, that is uh, most likely going to be in AHCI mode. What you want to do is click on that, I'll zoom in for you guys again, and when you click on that, double click, and put it in RAID mode. Now, I have to warn you guys right now. If you're installing Windows and then you want to raid, you just did everything wrong. You have to, for some reason, maybe this is my computer, I honestly have no idea why, but for raiding, you have to first raid everything, first raid all the hard drives, and then you have to install Windows, and then from Windows you have to go into your disk manager and then configure it uh, so that it sees the drives as one, say, drive D, but that's what you have to do so if you're installing Windows you have to first raid it and then put on Windows I did this this is now my third time installing Windows the first time that was just a test second time I did it wrong it was an AHCI mode then I installed it regular Windows settings and then from there I tried to raid it and it did not work so what you have to do is first do raid mode so now while it's in raid mode uh, you can see SATA 1, SATA 2, SATA 3, SATA 4, SATA 5 and SATA 6 like I said guys, MSI Click BIOS 2 for some reason does not see SATA 7 and SATA 8. No problem, uh, it's not that big of a deal, but I will be able to use it anyway. Now, as you can see, SATA 5 and SATA 6 are enabled, so that's what you want to do. I disable SATA 3 and SATA 4 because that's where my DVD drive and Blu-ray is plugged in, so I don't need to use that. SATA 1 and SATA 2 is okay to enable. Um, SATA 2 currently has my SSD, SATA 1 has nothing, uh, it doesn't really matter. Even if you uh, put in uh, enabled for rating, it doesn't do anything because it does not see more than one drive for that. So there's no problem doing that. But uh, enable that for 5 and 6. For me, depending on where you plug yours in, it could be completely different. 
but you have to remember where you plugged it in. Not that hard, just look over to your computer. But basically that's what you do, and um, from there, uh, I guess that's all you have to do. Uh, let me see, anything else I have to change? I don't believe so. Uh, nope, not really. Uh, for me, once again, I only had two things to do. Basically, uh, click RAID, uh, which was over there, and then enable the two drives. But that's basically it for the BIOS. So now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, click exit, and it's going to reset. And from here, I'm going to have to watch the screen and click control I. Control I is basically going to enable uh, the rating, the, the thing. It's going to take you through the rating process and uh, select the drives and rate them and put them together. Um, it's going to flash across the screen really quickly for you, and it may not be control I. For me, it is control I. It took me a couple times to get this. Uh, but control I and right here I got it so I have to do is uh, create a raid volume right there click enter and basically that's what you gotta do not enough space to create a volume alright that's what you gotta do so uh, where is the raid volume oh yeah because I already have delete uh, so I'm gonna delete it and I'm going to delete that one just for the purposes of this video uh, where is it delete key uh, yes nothing on there so no big deal then uh, basically just click up arrow go back to create and I'm gonna call this main hard drive once again and that's all you gotta do click enter raid 0 I don't need raid 0 I want raid 1 mirror so what you gotta do to change that is uh, click the down arrow to change it you can do raid 1 recovery or RAID 5, I only want RAID 1 which is mirror and that's basically what you gotta do select my disks, I'll do that I want 4 and 5, those are my two 1.3 terabyte one uh, non-RAID disks so select this one, I want to click space to select it then scroll down one more and click space, I left this one blank, that top one because that is my SSD and I do not want to RAID that so from there click enter and by the way you wouldn't be able to rate it anyway because it is a different size you can only rate discs that are different that are the same sizes so that's basically what happened there and that is the capacity of it can't change that much and create volume so click enter uh, strip size is not applicable and sync is not applicable that is fine and then click enter so warning yes um, and if you do have stuff make sure to back it up so that's what I recommend and from there, that's basically it. So we're going to go down to uh, 6, click exit, confirm, and now I'm going to go back into my BIOS. And uh, this is also going to be a two-part, uh, wait, no, that was uh, not the right thing to do. I'm going to click control, alt, delete, go back into BIOS and uh, select it to boot from disk. I have my Windows 7 Ultimate installer right here. I'll show you guys Windows 7 Ultimate 64-bit. You guys want to get a copy of that or something relatively close to that. 32-bit, not recommended. Just get some kind of 64-bit Windows operating system. So um, this part, most of you guys um, might already know how to install Windows. It's basically very simple. But this is going to continue my computer build series, so I'm going to show you guys how to install it anyway. Um, extremely simple so you don't really have to know anything to about anything to know this so my CD DVD going to uh, click exit but before I do that I'm going to put in the Windows uh, DVD and then it's going to boot from there so I just opened up and now I place it inside of my computer and click yes so from there it should, in theory, go to the Windows 7 installer disk. I'm not going to really have much for that installer disk. Um, it's not really a difficult process. Remember, install all your drivers first before going on the internet or anything like that. Also, get an antivirus and recommended a good browser. Um, I personally hate Internet Explorer, so if you want, get a different browser such as Google Chrome or Firefox, then get all your... Uh, all your uh, software uh, from your motherboard stuff, graphics card, all that. As you can see, Windows is loading its files. 
in advance we're going to do a custom install and um yeah i guess that's it and i will wait for this to load and then i'll be back i am back this is the windows 7 installer uh, English, English United States, and U.S., that's what it says right there. You guys probably cannot see that, but that is what it gave me. If you don't live in the U.S., select that. If you don't speak English, select a different one. Uh, wait, you can't do that yet. And then check your keyboard input method, and that's basically it. Click Install, and it's going to give you a custom installation option, I believe. Um should appear sometime soon. Uh, accept this. Click next. And by the way guys, there are no drivers, so if you're wondering, if you have more than one monitor, no, it will not support it. Neither of my monitors are in the proper resolution, and they are not doing a, um, they are not doing a, uh, graphics, I don't even know what to call it, it's, they're just not extending the displays from one to the other. Uh, so I believe you want to click the disk zero on the an unallocated space. Uh, that's what I'm going to click. Next, copy the files. And this is going to take a pretty long time. I'd say give it a good half hour. Uh, expanding Windows files does take quite a bit of time. Um, so I will leave you guys right there and um, finish the installation. Uh, go do something else and uh, that's basically it. So this is the part of the installation where you type in your account and all your credential stuff kind of. So I use the username Dean and the uh, uh, com computer name as um, DZD. So we're gonna click next. So I'm gonna type in the password now and I'll type in some uh, random password and then I might change it later. So I'll use my hint as hello and uh, click next. So my product key, um, I am going to enter that in. I have that and then I will be back with you. So after I typed in my product key, which I uh, was successfully, hopefully installed, is going to check it when I connect to the internet. I have my ethernet plugged in so it should uh, confirm it as soon as I uh, log in. But um, I'm going to use recommended settings for uh, helping to protect my computer and date and time. Let's see, it is 4:26 right now, but um, yeah, 4:20 actually it's 4:27 right now. Uh, it is the 9th, so that is all good. Uh, no, I want it to be minus five for Eastern time. Uh, where is that? Uh, Eastern time, U.S. and Canada and automatically adjust the clock for daylight savings next and now it's going to finalize my settings um, and this is going to log in and now is the part where you're most likely going to want to install all of your drivers everything um, you can of course do your disk management first which is what I'm going to show you guys um, a little bit after I install all my drivers uh, I have a ton of drivers to install. I have to install, install my Sapphire one, my MSI one for everything to work. I have to install a USB 3.0 driver. Um, I think a fan control one. I don't really know. Uh, I got a ton of stuff to install. So after that's installed, I will get back to you guys. Uh, this should launch up, and I'll show you guys when it launches up. Um, but when it launches up, uh, I'll just show you that screen momentarily, and then I'll go right into doing the disk management after I install all my drivers. So with that guys, uh, just continue setting up your stuff, install your drivers if you want to, and then we'll go into disk management a little bit later. My desktop has just been loaded. Um, I have no ethernet right now because I have to install all of my drivers. Um, I think that should improve once I install my drivers. All I got on my uh, home screen is the recycle bin, so nothing is going to work. Well, um, if you can probably tell, my screens are still not allowing me to do the uh, extended display stuff because they are not um, yet supported with the graphics card drivers. I have to install those. Um, so a lot of stuff to install, um, and I'll just get back to that once I install all my drivers. And then what you got to do is we're going to go into disk management. Um, I'm just showing you guys right now. Um, so I'm not, I don't have to show you guys later, but, uh, create and format hard drive disk partitions, 
basically that stuff. And we will do that all when it is uh, time to uh, do that after I install my drivers. So uh, go install your drivers and uh, get back to this video, pause it, and get back when all that is installed. In this step we have Windows running fine, all the drivers are working, uh, dual, uh, dual screen support uh, is now added, so now my graphics card, motherboard, uh, UPS, which is the uninterrupted power supply, which I got next to my computer, which is powering my computer. All those drivers are there. So now what I'm going to do is go into Disk Management. I already have it open. All you got to do is just search for Disk Management. It's extremely simple. D-I-S-K space M-A-N-A-G-E-M-E-N-T. It's that simple, really. So just click that. Uh, and now this is Disk Management itself. So what you got to do is you have to find that drive that you made. Um, you'll recognize it either by uh, the size of it or possibly the name. Um, so the size of it, I remember mine was around 1.3 ter terabytes, so uh, that is what is going to happen there. So I'm going to select that one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, uh, right click on this, and I'm going to click format. And then over here, it gives me the option to do a perform a quick format. Do not do that. It may be quicker, but the full one is just a lot easier. So just go with that. It's it's a lot easier. Uh, no hassle later uh, in case something goes wrong. The full format is what you want to do. Some people may not agree, but I just opt for the full format. Now you can name it whatever you want. Volume label, uh, I don't know, I'll call this my main hard drive. Uh, and I'm going to deselect the perform a quick format. Uh, allocation unit size, NTFS, all right, that's all good. Formatting this volume and erase all data, that is fine, I have nothing on there. And once again, anything on the drive, just back it up, do something with it, don't just leave it on there, because you don't want to lose it unless you don't care. But most likely, if it's important to you, I'd back it up, because there's nowhere else to get it if you lose it. So, click OK. And this can take anywhere from 20 minutes to, I don't know, anywhere, because everything can affect it, first of all speed of your hard drive, second of all, if you're doing anything with your computer, say you probably can't be playing Battlefield 3 um, while your computer is trying to uh, format this uh, and you can't expect it to run smoothly so I'd say just expect to wait a little bit for this to work but otherwise um, that's basically it for this video um, yeah rate, comment, and subscribe, there's not much else uh, so basically in this video I just showed you how to read your computer. Um, I will probably give you guys another video about overclocking and monitoring your CPU. And uh, basically that's just it. Um, hopefully you guys are now able to read your computer. Remember, if you're going to install Windows, you have to first put your computer in RAID mode. Because if you put it in AHCI or IDE and you install Windows and then you try to go back to RAID mode, it's not going to let you do that. Um, just in my case, maybe not for all people, but for me that happens, so I'd be, I'd go the safe way and do that. Otherwise, rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe. Also, you guys can go share this with your friends, favorite, like, and comment on this video. Also, feel free to check out the previous video, which you can see right here. Annotation is right there, and go ahead and click on it.